Okay, everybody, what is going on? Uh, I'm your host, Morgan J. Ingram, and we have Will making his appearance here soon. And so, as you all know, if you've been to this before, you know what the question I'm going to ask first is, what and wh where are you from? Th that's the first question we always ask. Where are you from? Where are you tuning in from? Uh, good morning, uh, good afternoon to some of you. It also could be the next day for some of you, depending on where you're tuning in from. So we always sure. just like to know where people are coming in from. So, Will, I mean... We this is worldwide. This is kind of crazy. <laughs> yeah, I'm always like amazed when you see like folks from like Australia or like New Zealand come in, mostly because like the time zone thing. But yeah, always get some good love from folks over in the EU. Um, I see Ukraine on the list. That's awesome. Um, man, we got Poland? Dublin. Some ATLians. Heck yeah. That's oh, we awesome. do. Okay. We got someone from Alpha Centauri. There we go. <laughs> We got an interstellar. Where, where is that? I was, like, I was like, what? Where is that? Like, yo, go, go in the internet. Like, that's that's beyond international. It's interplanetary. Yeah. I Intergalactic. Mean, I mean, what kind of, what kind of, I don't even know how to track that data. Like, okay, we have someone from out of the universe. Like, how do you track that? Like, I have no, Middle a, Earth. Like, I don't even know, y'all. This is get. This is already getting wild. We haven't even gotten to the content yet. <laughs> it, it only took like four million years for the email to get there. Like, don't worry about it. <laughs> the next, the next iteration of uh, of lavender. All right, y'all. So, tell us where you're tuning in from. Uh, let us know. Uh, we have people who are time traveling. We have people who are on Middle Earth. Like, this is this is crazy. So, the the you thing that it. I want to ask y'all before we go into the intros is, you're here to learn about some email. Uh, we're gonna do some email teardowns. So, we're gonna get right into it. You know how we do it. However. I want y'all to answer this question for me because this is important because I'm going to ask you this question at the end and I want to see if it improves for you. If you were to say right now on a scale to one to five, one being I'm not good at outbound email at all, like I'm terrible, five being I think I'm pretty proficient and I could potentially you know, be an elite at email outbound skills, what would you rate yourself on a scale to one to five? I'm like definitely a one, so I don't... I thought this was yeah, a close we'll challenge session. Wait. <laughs> Wrong <laughs> session. Uh, our real Isn't guest. Like a cold calling webinar. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're having fun here, y'all. We oh, got people from so... I know we got a good yeah. crowd. Jim's exactly, confident. Exactly, exactly. here for that four. <laughs> I love it. So most people looks like one to three. So our goal here today is at least get you one level up from this time you spend with us. So before we go into it, some of you may not know who we are or what's going on. So I'm going to first and foremost, let's talk to Will. Will, tell us more about yourself. Yeah. So I'm one of the co-founders at a company called Lavender. Um, if you follow me on LinkedIn, you know, I talk a lot about email, um, you know, cold calling jokes aside. Um, yeah, I'm one of the, uh, I've, I don't have three LinkedIn top sales voice, but I do have one from 2021. Um, and yeah, I, if you think about what we do at Lavender, we help tens of thousands of sales reps write better emails faster. And so our product sees millions of emails every single week. And so I get to bring a lot of that really fun data of what's working into conversation for this. But also just get to bring the perspective of somebody who's constantly receiving cold emails. So um, that said, Morgan, I think I've awesome. started your intro for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, I started off as an SDR. So shout out to all the SDRs in the room. i uh, been an SDR manager and I've trained different organizations across the board on top of the funnel on how to do cold email on top of other things. So Slack, Zoom, Google, Snowflake. I've been to all those organizations to teach them how to do this and coach them. So now we're diving in to teach you all the same on how to, be, to get better. Uh, and so we're going to dive right into this and help you out along the way uh, as we go into this. So the first email, let's get into it. So how we're going to do this is we're just going to look and analyze the email. We're going to tell you what we like. We're going to tell you what could be suggested to change, and we'll give you some modifications that we believe to be true. Now, in the chat, if you want to give some feedback as well, you can absolutely do that too. You could be like, hey, I like this email, or hey, here's something I would suggest to do. It's completely up to you on how you want to get feedback in the chat. Our goal here is to give you feedback on how to be better 
all these emails will not be elite emails, right? But we have a mix of them. Uh, and these are real emails, by the way, that people have submitted. We did not just make these up. These are real emails that people have submitted. So, Will, let's let's get into the feedback here. As you look at this email, give us some yes. things that you like and some things that you're like, okay, maybe they could do without it. So let me just start by saying this email will probably get a response. Right. And the reason it'll probably get a response is because of the personalized nature of it. Right. Like this is clearly a one to one email. And so you're just going to tap into that psychology principle of reciprocity. Right. And like people are just going to respond because you put the effort in. Now, does that mean it's a good email? No. <laughs> it, it could still use some love. It could still like use some some help here. That middle paragraph is really bulky. I do love, I, I wonder if this person follows my content because I'm a big fan of breaking up long sentences into choppier ones, but I would still break this up into smaller paragraphs. So like breaking that, basically they found any moment where there could be a comma and they turned it into a period. And the reason this matters is because if you're looking at the email data, most emails are written at or beyond a 10th grade reading level, which means you're using big words, long sentences, and the person on the other end just tunes out and is just overwhelmed. This paragraph, it the idea is there, right? You took it literally, which I appreciate, but like the idea behind it is like, hey, you should probably think about the content and break that up a little bit more so it's easier to digest. On a mobile phone, that paragraph is gonna be like really heavy to try to get through. And so, and by the way, that's where they're eight times more likely to have their first read through. And so those are just some like early impressions and thoughts. It The CTA at the bottom feels really wordy, um, but like, I love the personalized nature of it. So like, if a rep comes to me with this, like I wanna just like first and foremost say like, keep doing what you're doing. You're focused on the right things, which is like building that one-to-one -one connection. Yeah, I think you. I don't want to repeat anything you said because everything is spot on there. So hopefully, y'all took notes. Uh, I want to. I want to double click on the PS. I think one of the things that I always encourage people to do is, if you want to add in something that maybe isn't good as the first intro sentence, but it's still good from a personal level, put it in the PS, right? Because if they would have maybe started with that PS, it might have not have stood out in that email. So it's good to put it in the PS just to have it stand out and be like, okay, this, this is something unique. It's good. To Will's point, I like the first sentence. It shows like, okay, this is a one-to-one. -one. And something I also suggest is if you, let's say right here on this next sentence, right? As you said, multi-touch multi -touch, uh, and prospecting is definitely working, but this requires the additional bandwidth of your team. So these two sentences, you could have brought this into a question. You could have been like, uh, based based on what you said from multi touch from multi touch, how are you currently addressing that with your team? Right, you could have asked that as a question and then gone into, hey, the reason for this question, and that could have gone into your value prop, which could have condensed the email as well. So that's yeah. like my feedback on it. But overall, I think from an email standpoint as a whole, this is a solid email, right? That probably would get maybe a response because most emails are pretty standard and pretty stock. Yeah. Um, the the other thing I'm, I'm thinking through here is there's a, a core question I'll ask any seller when they're showing me an email. And that is, why? <laughs> why are you sending this email to somebody? And I'm lacking a lot of clarity on what that means. Um, so it's like, as you said, multi-touch prospecting, like there's just a lot going on in here. And I know mm -hmm. like it's personalized and so the intent's really good. And so I'm just kind of like, okay, I'll respond and like give it the time of day because it's one-to-one. -one. But at the same time, I, the entire time I'm wondering like, what do you want? Like, what what is this about, right? Um, and I think that could be clarified a little bit more. People are just going to get lost in the weeds of this. I agree. Absolutely. I so what a digital channel is. You Do you feel like that's... um jargon that maybe that's not necessary yeah like i feel like there's a clear way to say that right like hey could you imagine if your team had a like 
e-commerce store for buying the product or something. Like you can tell, I literally don't know what a digital channel is because I'm like, I'm reaching for ways to tie it back in. <laughs> I'm like, what what could be a an easier way to describe it? Is like digital channel isn't it? Um, like if you told me you have a digital channel for your team, I'm like what does that mean? Is that like yeah? A, is that a white paper? <laughs> <laughs> that's a that's a good point and i think that's another thing for everyone to also take uh, take a step back on as well is that if you have jargon that you use internally but it but it would confuse people externally don't use it now the only scenario is they use this and maybe the prospect knows what this means right and maybe it was in the talk right but you know at the end of the day like if it's not there then it's just don't don't do that so that's the key thing there so uh one thing as well as you'll continuously throw in uh questions uh tr try to put it in the q a so that we can gather it and i can i can address it and we can do it uh, but if you have overall yeah. questions throw them in the q a but we do have some questions coming in here and also as well uh there will be subject lines on the ones upcoming this one they did not submit a subject line so uh <laughs> we asked for it they didn't submit it so uh, nothing that we could do about it but I guess essentially what they're saying here, Tom's got a question. What was the first comment you made about this email? Will splitting the wording, they, they want to hear that again. Yeah. So if you're looking at an email, like say I took this exact same email and in that middle paragraph, I just combined them all into basically one sentence. I see this all the time. Those long sentences are actually going to hurt your chance of getting a response. So by breaking them up into blockier sentences, you improve your chance of getting a reply because it's easier for the reader to scan the information and thusly understand it. And if they understand it, they're more likely to respond. That said, this paragraph itself is too bulky and like there's ways that we could lighten this up. Like just using the word additional bandwidth, like, you know, why, why can't you just say requires more time from your team, right? There's shorter words we can use as well. It's not just the sentence structure. It's also the words that go into it um, that, that can help um, as far as like ways to shorten and lighten up this email. Cool. Tom, did that help answer your question? Let us know in the chat if it does. Uh, and then we will move on. All right. So again, like I said, if you have questions, throw it in the q and I'm going to try to, if it comes to the chat, I'll try to get to it. But if you put it in the Q&A, it's easier for me to come back to as we go to each email. So I think we've identified, analyzed this email. Let's go to the next one. So Tom, that was helpful. Awesome. So here we go on this question. If we could maybe get closer in on this email here, there is a lot, there's a lot going on. So I'm going to read the context. So, so for some people, they gave us the context. So the context here is, Contact downloaded a Gartner quadrant report from the website. Now they're following up a request regarding the content. And now they're having a call to action to discuss. We do have the subject line here um, as well. And now we're going to dive into this email. So, Will, what are you seeing? So, I understand the intention behind this, right? Like, the context is they downloaded this thing. The problem is they think this is the only thing on the person who downloaded its mind, right? A lot of times what will happen is like somebody will download something and they never read it or they'll download something, they read it, and then like five other things came up, right? I'm juggling at least like four different things in any given moment. And so you trying to assume that I know every single thing about this like white paper probably not the best way to start. Um, in fact, the way I would probably start this is like, hey, saw you downloaded this thing. What did you think of it? Like just try to start up a conversation, anything like stand out. And then you can start to move that into, you know, usually when people are reading this, they're starting to think about X. Um, yeah, this feels really informative. Um, I, I haven't had a chance to run it like through lavender and see if like that would be the tone that comes up like from a measurement standpoint, but that's how it feels for me reading it. And I know from our data, any sort of informative tonality in your email, any whatsoever is going to reduce your chance for reply by about 26%. So that's one out of the four people that would have responded or not, um, yeah, that, that's my immediate like thought process on this. It, the assumption is that they read it and I 
probably would assume differently. Okay, so so I'm I'm gonna ask I'm gonna ask a question to everybody in the audience, and then and then I have a a thing that I need you all to take consideration on because I see this a lot, and it's kind of pseudo gonna go and me to a rant, but it'll be helpful for everyone. So for everyone listening in. Put a one in the chat if you are a sales leader or you you lead a team or you're an enablement. I just I need to get a pulse here because I just need a quick we just need a quick data set so that like it's not random me saying this. It's not oh this is what just I believe. Okay, let's go. So we got a, we got a good amount of leaders in the room. Shout out to the leaders here enabling their teams, ta- uh, getting in the information. Okay, so my follow up question to you is when you ever download a report or PDF. <laughs> What's what's the percentage of the things that you've actually read that you've downloaded? Just just give me a percentage. It doesn't have to be accurate. Just a, just a range. What perc- what percentage of the Maria, things? I saw Maria Bras in the comments that she doesn't. <laughs> I just want to see. I just want to see. I'm curious. I'm curious. I'm curious if people like legitimately do this. And I'm not. If give me the real answer. I just want to get a pulse here. All right. So on average, you have like average got three thousand tabs. <laughs> <laughs> Wander goes control F. Yeah, that's me. That's what I do when I download something. I'm just looking for certain things. Okay, so we have okay, about 20 average is like 20 to 40. Some people are doing 95. Someone said 95. So shout out, shout out to you, right? That's great. But most people are getting around 20 to about 40 percent. Okay, so that means that the majority of the time, right? That's a 20, 40% is still a failure rate. So you're not reading a large portion of them, but you're still getting some of them and you're scanning the majority of them. Okay. So this is what I want you to think about when I see an email like this, it's yeah, I understand what you're trying to do, but you have to think about the reader in this sense. And the best example that I give to teams is to think about ESPN top 10. How many of y'all seen ESPN top 10? Put a two in the chat. If you're like, oh yeah, I've seen that before. I know what you're talking about. Put put it put a two in the chat if you've seen this before. Because right, I don't want to state something and then like no one's heard of this before. All right, most people <laughs> have seen the top 10, right? You're like, yeah. oh, cool, in, in a bicycle kick, whatever, right? So here's the thing. You watch the top 10, it's a portion of the game, right, that potentially could get you excited to go watch the whole thing. Some people don't like watching the whole basketball game or the whole football or even the whole entire hockey game. But they love watching the highlights to get a snippet of it, to be like, that was cool, that was good information. I saw the highlight of the game, I can move on. I didn't have to watch the whole thing. So what what am I saying all this one for? I want you to think about all the leaders in the room right now. You're a rep, solo rep, business owner, I don't really care. When you're doing things like this, think about how do I give them the highlights and assume that they've never read it at all. So I, I'm a little bit different on this perspective. I assume that they never read it. People are busy. They're all over the place. They probably don't remember what they even read. So I'm saying, hey, you come into something like this. Let's say the, the Gartner report. I would I would do like Gartner approved highlights or something like that, right? I'm, I'm going to rewrite it in real time as best as I can because I'm just seeing this, right? So I would just say I would. my hook would probably be like you might not have even read this article. You you probably didn't read this, probably didn't read this PDF. Here are three quick highlights that we've been hearing from our clients that have been helpful when they do read this report. And then you do three bullet points, and then one of the bullet points you could do a value prop, and then you do a call to action. Y'all, this is this is how you're gonna get responses. I've ran this with multiple teams. I do this myself. Guess what? Nobody's doing this now. You can decide not to do it, right? Then you know that's on you. But if you decide to do this, I'm telling you going to change the game. Most people send this email. They say, hey, congratulations on downloading this report. Want to check out the support? Here's 8,000 things on what we did. Nobody cares. So I'm telling y'all, if you do this, it's helpful. But that's my rant. That's that's me. I'm going to shut down now. But that's how I would do it. That's how I would do it. I love that take because like it reminds me of the the post-demo follow-up where people just like link stack and expect somebody to Shout out to Nate Nasrallah who gave me a word for that link stacking, <laughs> where like they send over like fourteen different resources after, you know, the conversation, and they're, you know, no one's ever read a single one of them, right? It's the same thing. Like most people who downloaded this report haven't gone to read it, and so giving them the highlight is really just a helpful way to to check it out. Um, and that kind of goes back to this like larger theme of like as sellers, we should probably be trying to be helpful more so than anything. Um, um, Andy Paul has a great 
uh, phrase for this, right? Which is to sell is to help the other person make progress. And like, sometimes that progress is just like deciding whether or not it should be a priority. Um, and like that email that you put together, Morgan, that hook and then the highlight reel, that helps somebody figure that out. And if it is a priority, right? If all of a sudden they start raising their hands saying, oh, that is something that I need to make a priority. Guess who's there? Guess who's built that credibility from sending an email like that? Mm, absolutely. Oh, <laughs> I agree with you. And I'm laughing at Jay because he's like, you want to hear the voice again? But the voice only comes out when I, um, so you have to see certain mistakes, right? It's just like at the end of the email, it's like, hope it's informative and useful. It's like, yo, like, no, no one talks like that. Y'all like, I've never said that to anyone in my real life. Hope that was informative. Like, no, you never say that. I'm not like trying to roast. I'm just saying that like, you have to like, when you read your email, like you have to read it out loud and be like, wait, I would never say that. So then I make a voice to make fun of my own self when I write my own emails. And I'm like, I, why would I, I don't say that. So I say it in a yeah. weird voice. So then I don't put it in my email. That's the reason why I do it. It's not if, to make fun if of somebody actually, because, like, why If would somebody like said that? that out loud, Morgan, that's exactly how they'd say it though. <laughs> exactly. So, it's, so I'm like, I don't want to sound like that. So then I'm like, delete. So that's why I say it like that. It's not to make fun of anyone. It's to like basically tell myself, yeah, that makes no sense. I would never go up to someone and be like, hey, hope that was informative and useful. They'd be like, delete from phone, contact. Like, it's just, it's a way to laugh at yourself and be like, that makes no sense. It has not, I'm not making fun of people. I'm just saying I laugh at my own self when I do it. This is how I write my emails. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, anyways, I'll, I'll go over. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, Will. <laughs> like, shout out to people reading your emails out loud before they hit send. It That's is what I do. Helpful tips we could probably give you because all of a sudden you'll start talking in that voice and you're like, wow, I can't hear myself. <laughs> right. If you start talking in the voice, I call it the Ernie voice. You start talking in the Ernie voice, you delete the email, redo it, put it in lavender. Like you reset yourself. So, anyways, let me go back to what I said. All right, y'all. I'm gonna I'm gonna go slow. And again, like I said, you can modify this accordingly. This also will be on replay, so you can also hear what I said again, right? And slow me down, because I do talk fast. And I understand that. I'm excited. So I'll slow it down. All right. So let's say the subject line would be um, Gartner, Gartner approved security highlights or Gartner report highlights. You can play around with that, right? Then the opener would be like, you probably didn't read this report. That would be my, op that would be my opener. And then after I say, you probably didn't read this report, I would say, here are th the three main highlights from this report that our, our clients, or you can say that your peers have found to be useful. Three bullet points of the things that are useful. You could figure that out. You can ask marketing, whatever you want to do. Then after that, one of the three bullet points, you're going to give a value prop on how you potentially could help that person. I cannot give that to you, but I don't know exactly what I would pull here because I don't exactly know what the value prop is. But, you know, you could figure out maybe it's something around security operations, right? We help in that in that realm. I don't know what the product is, so it's hard for me to reword that. Then the last piece would be around the call to action. Be like, hey, and you have two different options here. You could be like, would you be interested in learning more about this? Or you could say, would you be interested in downloading the report? I will send it to you, right? You're not going to attach the URL and the report. You're not going to do all that. That's too much madness. You're either going to say, do you want to see the report? Respond. Great. Here you go. Or do you want a meeting? And they respond that way. So I'm hoping that that was helpful. Thank you. Thank you, Reese. Shout out to Reese. Breaking it down for me. Breaking it down. Yeah. The, and what's interesting about that is you could follow up to that email with like a really clean bump. And you could just say, hey. Not sure if you've had a chance to you know, check out the report or even this highlight reel, but usually when we see this, yeah, if someone's dealing with the following problem, right? Treat the download as an intent signal, not as you know they're qualified to buy your product or anything. It's just like, hey, usually when someone does this, this problem exists within the org, or maybe give them two problems that exist within the org. Um, and by giving them two options, it makes it really easy for them to say, that looks like me. And then you've set yourself up for that. Like, this is something that actually is a priority moment. Love it. Awesome. So I know we really broke down this email too. Hopefully that was helpful. 
on the repeat. And again, please do not send these emails anymore. If you came to this webinar and and I find out that you sent an email like this after we broke this down, y'all, Will, Will, I don't know. Will's going to come after you with some spell from Lavender. I don't know. It's not going to be good. That's all I know. Um, the email police are coming. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to come. They're going to come for you. So real quick, uh, before we go into email three, we do have some questions that I want to recognize y'all. If you have questions, please throw them in the Q&A and we will address it. So let's get the question up from Jared, if we could, uh, and share it up here on the screen, because I think this is a really good question for us to answer here. Is it statistically backed that asking a question within the email garners a higher response rate? What's the fine line that you can walk when asking questions? And I'm assuming that means outside the call to action. I typically say two max, but Will has the data and is in this in the weeds on this, so he can help. Yep. So the optimal amount of questions you should be asking are either one question or zero questions. Um, so as soon as you start asking multiple questions, your chance of getting a response just like plummets. It can go down as much as like 50%. So you're basically having your chance of getting a response by trying to split people's attention to get them to do one or the other. Um, that's probably okay. the easiest way to think about it, right? It's like, if I'm trying to split you to say like, hey, do you want this or that? And like, you're just trying to read an email, you're just gonna do neither. Um, so uh, my rule for this is like the one idea rule, which is I want you to do one thing. I have one idea that I'm trying to get across and I'm gonna have one idea per email, per paragraph, per sentence. And like, Cleaning up that way helps you really simplify and streamline exactly what you're trying to get across. Um, the, the question always comes up of like, what do you mean zero questions? Like, how do you get a response on that? Well, one, you're sending someone a cold email. So like you obviously want a response, but the other is tonality. So I can ask a question without asking a question. And I'll, I'll give you an example. Um, mm -hmm. It's, a literary tool called a conditional statement, an if-then statement. So if I finish up an email to you, Morgan, and I finish it with, if that sounds like you, let me know, right? Or if yeah. I've got this all wrong, you know, feel free to correct me. What mm -hmm. I'm doing there is I'm just inviting you to respond by using this tentative, unsure tonality without actually putting a question mark at the end of something. Mm. That's strong. That's strong. I like that. So you can ask a question at the beginning of your email, but still have a conditional statement that would be essentially a call to action without having those two questions as well. Totally. Powerful. The other piece is what kind of question are you asking? So I, I summarize this up as, hey, Morgan, where do you want to go to dinner tonight? Versus, hey, Morgan, do you want to go to eight sushi or... Uh, What's another spot in West Midtown where you are at? Bar um, Barcelona. Barcelona's one. Yeah. Do you want to go to eight sushi or Barcelona? Because I've given you options, it's a closed ended question. It's really easy for you to think through what kind of response you want to give, right? Because I've actually pre categorized your like mental list of how you want to respond. So you're like, okay, one, it's not like fast food. On the other end, it's not like the fanciest dinner we're ever going to have together. But mm -hmm. He's really just trying to get a feel for what type of food and what type of food within West Midtown. And so now I have a really clean list that I can go off of and respond back to you. It's either A, B, or I can easily come up with C. So an easy way to do this within your cold email is a yes or no question. Instead of saying like, how are you approaching personalization today? Just say, would it be helpful if the following thing? Or do you think your team is having an easy time personalizing right now? It's an easier question to answer than this how question or what are you doing question or why mm. question. Make it simpler, make it easier to respond to. I love that. And uh, I think Tom was asking, and I think someone else asked as well. Uh, Jeremy, you asked to open into yes or no questions. I think Will answered that question for you. Uh, so was that helpful there? Because I, I think Will went, yeah, okay. I think Will went into that. So I think that's answered the question. I think we're good there. So let's get back into the next email and let's tear that down. And if you're still in the chat giving questions, that's fine. But it's easier if you put them in the Q&A. We will look to answer as much as we can as we go through the emails. All right. So 
This email right here looks like the context. The subject line is hiring at X. That is the the company here. And then it looks like as well, they have, it looks like they have two variations of how they do their opener. I think this might be a template version. I think that's the context here. And then it looks like, yeah, it looks like they're using that trigger of the hiring piece. So Will, when you're seeing this email, how are you looking at this? Um, the first thing that's standing out to me is like all these like very specific numbers and percentages. Uh, to me, that immediately reads sales. <laughs> like somebody's <laughs> trying to tell me something. If they're like, "Hey, you've like hired X number of individuals and like you're growing at X percent, you know, week over week," I'm like, "I don't even know." If we talk about that, and like you could tell me my percentage of like hiring growth, and it'd be like. Yeah, maybe this is a knock on me, but like I would be like, I, <laughs> sure, maybe. Um, <laughs> <it's>, uh, <laughs> that sounds right. We're growing fast. <laughs> We're moving quickly. You. You've done the math. I'll trust you on that, right? <laughs> but, like I find that people get too wrapped up, right? Like you're in LinkedIn and like you're diving into like the growth chart of like new employee count. And like, I don't think people on the other end are doing that same thing. So that's like the first thing that that comes to my mind. I'm curious, what what's the first thing that comes to you, for you? Um, uh, yeah. So the first thing that it, it's very similar to you, but then I also have a point B. It, it's just the percent the percentages and understanding like what they mean because it's like we have 58, 50, and then you also those X numbers are also probably numbers that they're putting in there as well. So there's like five numbers in this email right and that's just a lot because i don't know what direction to go into and i don't know what they mean and another big piece of this as well is that like it stands out to me because i think numbers are important and someone asked this question we'll get into it i think numbers are important when you have a case study that's relevant to the industry and you can get super granular where like you could say like okay when i'm in this industry we see a x percentage and this is typically what we see okay I think that's a little bit different, right? And you know, we can have that conversation in the comments with Will here. I think that's different. This is like, hey, we're just like blanketing. Here's like the percentages of what we feel to be right. And if it's another industry, these percentages could mean a whole lot. The different and think about it this way: the difference between a two percent growth with Coca-Cola's revenue and a two percent growth of a startup is massively different. It's a huge difference. It's like millions and billions of dollars versus just like maybe thousands of dollars. And I think that's where people go wrong, right? It's like you have to understand the percentages can be different based on the industry and the company. So ultimately yeah. that's that. And then the, the other thing is the bolding. I'm not, a, I'm, I have become not a huge fan of bolding. Now, people in the room that get a lot of cold emails, you can let me know what you think about bolding. I'd be very curious because I know we have a lot of leaders in the room. So when you get you a cold that? email, I don't know if like you like the bolding. I just don't, I think bolding is like, not that it's just not necessary that those are things that stood out to me there's data behind that um it's not ours it sales loft published this where like the formatting the the bolding it reduces your chance of a response it's because people just immediately assume that it's something templated because they see that extra formatting whether mm -hmm. it's bullet points or um bolding like that interesting I mean, yeah, I was curious in the in the italics. <laughs> Trashy. <laughs> Chris Brown in the house. Chris, Chris Brown. Brown in the house. That's hilarious. Um, Ooh. any anything anything else on on this one? I just feel like this is a very templated message. I think if you're running a campaign, you want to see if it works or not. That's like how I see this. It's not. It's just not personalized. Yeah. I think the modification would be have to around be around industry more than anything. So let's start at the top. So like there, there's sort of like an A versus B start. I definitely prefer the highlighted version of like, how's your search for X coming so far? Um, I wouldn't do the number. I would just say, how's the search for, let's assuming they use the term vacancies. They probably work in like maybe the hospitality industry. So maybe it's like, you know, how's your search for, um, you know, line cooks going so far? Right. And like, that's a simple enough conversational start that like it shows you've already done the research because you're calling out a specific thing you're looking for. You don't need to call out how many, um, you know, and then like the next line, instead of saying, 
like noticed in the first line. I might move that to the second line. And I might just say something like, you know, noticed your screening process is kind of lengthy compared to other orgs we work with. So these things like organizations or vacancies, they're unnecessary long words that we can either cut down or we can find a more casual way of doing it. Like even how is, I just put the little, what's the mark called? I'm blanking on it. Um, it's not a quotation, but it's like the other one. A contraction, there it is. Just make it a <laughs> yeah. contraction. It's like, how's your search, right? Make it sound like you're talking to them, um, talking with them over to them, sorry. Um, and then, yeah, that's where you can start to explain. Yeah, our companies helped others speed up um, the candidate screening process from weeks to hours. You don't need to bold it. Um, mm -hmm. And then I would just say, like, think this could be helpful for y'all. That's it. Awesome. Thank you, Will, on the reword. And the last thing, someone went crazy. If we could get go to the next email, but also let's bring up Blake here, uh, who said, do hyperlinks also reduce response rates? Yes. I, I'm a god. This is probably astounding. Yes. <laughs> well, there's the the obvious yes of like you're asking them to go to a link, which means you're asking them not to respond. So inevitably, you're going to reduce hyperlinking. I see Maggie Bloom in the chat. Which yeah, shout out um, Mailshake. You know, you're also going to hurt your chance of delivering that email to the person on the other end. So that's another piece to that. Awesome. All right, so here's the next email. And again, if you have questions, we're gonna we're gonna get to them. We're gonna cover this email and then we'll answer the questions that are in there. So if you have put a question in the chat and it has not been answered, go ahead and put it in the QA. We will quickly go through those after we review this email. Now let's, let's blow this email up a little bit here so we can dive into it. Um, y'all, okay, so I, well, can, can I just can I can I just quickly talk about what I immediately see? You already know where I'm about to go. You know exactly what it, you know exactly what I'm about to say. You know me well enough to you know exactly what I'm about to say first, y'all. All right, remember when I told y'all to read to read these in a voice? I, I I literally could just I literally see the email and just see it's like hey uh, like it's like a quill. I wish I had like a quill and like a like the the the, the wigs they used to wear back in the day in the 1880s. It's like oh dear 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 Sally, I hope that you're well. Like that's literally what I like. That's what I like. Who's Who's talking like that? I, like, here's the thing. Like, I'm not roasting the person. I'm roasting myself. When you're writing this, like, you don't got to think about how you're writing this. Like, oh, oh, you know, what? let me get my quill out today. It's like, dear Quinn, I hope that you're well. Bro, we're not talking like that anymore. I'm just I'm just telling you all this. And yeah, ChatGPT, I, I played around with it. It does write emails like this uh, as well if you're not careful. But again, I just want y'all to really, like, think about the way that you write these emails emails y'all you have to make sure right that you're reading them out loud and realize this is not at all how i sound this is not at all how i talk to a person and also as well like if i asked the leaders in the room and i said hey you know real quick if you put a three in the chat when you see hope all as well do you delete it? it it i don't know it might be high depending on what depending on how people reply but when i've done i've done what thousands of trainings i ask the leaders every single time hey what do you see when you see hope all as well delete it goes into a spam folder some people have it go to a folder that auto deletes i'm just telling y'all what happened so the hope all as well here you just don't want it there i mean i just wanted to start there but i mean there's a lot of there's a lot of things we could break down in this email this is not a reworded one this is just do not do these things yeah the the easy like it should be inherently obvious not to use deer, but like the data does support this. Like, don't use deer. Um, just don't. It's not a good good way to. Now start. we'll say this. I'm actually going to say this. I'm going to interject because this is important. Because someone may be watching this and like, wait, hold on. The only time there's a time where this is useful in certain countries, this is how they write. So I just want to. I want to be very mindful of this. They have very very formal language. So like in France, uh, in Japan, even in some places in APAC. They write like this, and if you write it other way, you don't get responses. So I want to have that as a one caveat, but everyone else, you're probably not there, so don't do this. <laughs> Continue, Will. Probably not there. Um, yeah. Um, the I'm just laughing at the hope this finds you well. Start. <laughs> <laughs> See, well, now we're not going to do this because you're going to imagine me with a quill. The, with the, you're going to be like, oh, well, you're not going to do it. The second piece, my name is blank, and I do the whatever following thing. 
this is something that is a no-no. And the reason you do it is because of how you've been taught to cold call. And it works. It makes sense on a cold call. And Morgan, you've got a great framework for like how you get someone to ask you Mm -hmm. to like give this. But the uh, my name is what you're trying to answer is who is this person, right? When they're reading an email, that is not the question they care about. When you cold call someone, that's something they care about, right? They want to figure out who this is that called them from an unknown number. But if I'm emailing you, your name is sitting there in my inbox. You don't need yep. to answer that question. That's also what your like your little signature underneath the email should answer. Don't worry about that. Worry about why they should be reading this message, which, you know, <laughs> there is an answer. You just had to like sift through the, I just wanted to reach out regarding, right? You, all you have to do is start with your company's recent work on blank that would be the place to start this entire message. Yeah, I absolutely, I absolutely agree. I think it's a good point as well. In the my name, it's like if someone said it's not an Eminem song. Hi, my name is no. You already, you already said that when you sent the email, right? So you don't need to do that. And I think the whole thing on this is like this is just something. All these things are just to avoid. Wouldn't do it. Very long. And just take a step back and reword. Will, anything we want to talk about here before we go into some some questions? I think this is straightforward as in like, this is too long, things to avoid, not anything to reword here because it's a lot. Yeah, this this was sent by by Lavender Joe. Um, <laughs> the, the paragraph, the paragraph Lavender Joe nasty. came to the webinar. <laughs> he, he submitted an email. Um, yeah, the paragraphs are way too bulky. It's way too much about them. Um, yeah, it's just wordy. You've got this weird, like, would you be available next week for a quick call? I'd rather, like, gouge my eyeballs out than, like, answer that question in an email. Like, no, I don't want to give you time on my calendar. You haven't earned it. Like, I don't know why, but sales reps are scared to have a conversation in the inbox. Well, I do know why. The reason is because they've been, like, told that they need to go sell some meeting. And, like, that's how they're incentivized. But, like, here's the deal. Like, just practice discovery, start to learn about them, have a conversation with them via the inbox where like they feel like it's less of a time imposition than like, if you were like, Hey, let's just go talk about this on a call. Right. It feels like an easier ask to just like give some information, go back and forth over email. Love it. Absolutely. Well, appreciate that breakdown. So we have a couple more emails, but we're going to get to some questions and Y'all, before we get to some questions, we can't answer any questions until you answer this question, which is, have y'all found this to be impactful so far? Let us know in the chat because, I mean, if it's not, we can just shut it down. Will and I can just leave. We can just go write our, we can go get some uh, some quills and go write some, <laughs> dear. <laughs> we can, we, we can just leave. We can, we can just, and... Yeah, we can just leave. We can do cry into our eight. sushi roll. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. We can go to eight. We can go, we can leave. Like if y'all are not really feeling this, we can we can get out of here, right? Um, but but okay, they don't want us to go. They they uh, <laughs> we're gonna come. Yeah. With, we, do y'all want a round two? That's the question. Do they even want a round two? Should we even continue round two? Should, do, do, should we do this again? We're not even, like we're not even done yet. But okay, I like okay, this formatting because like one of the things we did here was like a lot of times when we do like email teardowns, we'll have conversation before we jump into the teardowns, and mm. we found that like people really wanted to just get to the teardown, so we did that first. So it sounds like that was that was a good thing. Love it. Uh, Bernard's asking, do we have a, a Twitter thread based on these tips? That is a great question. Uh, I know the team in the Cognizant side, we could definitely create that for y'all. So we'll definitely do that. But let's let's get to the questions here. Uh, glad you're feeling impactful. If you found it impactful, share it out on LinkedIn. Let people know. We want it, we want this place to be packing so people can learn. But Jared, yo, shout out to Jared. I I I I don't have my soundboard on me right now, but Jared, you're killing it with the questions. So shout out to you. Uh, what's the best way to leverage your client testimonials within a cold email? So we were just talking about this. Now it's like, how do we leverage it? Well, I'll toss this to you. Okay, so I have a framework that I like for this. Um, and uh, I'm curious, like, yeah, I'll, I'll take a note out of your playbook, Morgan. It, in the chat, um, have y'all ever heard of the star or bar framework for how to answer questions in an interview? Just like put a number two in there. Mm. 
Okay, we got a few. Okay. We got a good pulse. Uh, good pulse. So the idea is right. I ask you, hey, tell me about a time when you did something terrible at your job, right? The the framework for how you respond, I'll use bar, is you give background, the actions taken, and the results. So B, background, A, action, R, results. That is how every single one of your client case studies and testimonials is like drafted out, is under that exact same framework. At least it should be. Um, so if you're thinking about, okay, how do I turn that into an email? Well, there either needs to, there needs to be like some sort of context that like compares that person back to that case study, right? That's probably something that Morgan will harp on more than I do, but like too many mm -hmm. just like random client case study testimonials get sent out that mean nothing to me. But how you actually message that is like, yeah, the team at blank was dealing with the exact same thing. They saw, you know, X, Y, Z problem, situation, problem related to it. The action they took this is where you get to like sort of toot your own home that they, they started using our product or like we spun up a project with them related to XYZ. And then you can say the result, right? The outcome of them using you, your service, your product is the following thing. And that is how I would do it as opposed to like trying to hyperlink to something that you want to send them to. Yeah. I, and I want to, everything Will said you all can, should go do. I'm going to give you something tactical that you can go do to make sure to keep it all in one place. So when I had my team, we had 13 SDRs when I was leading my team and we were trying to identify how could we send client testimonials uh, at scale within our, within the sales engagement tool. So most sales engagement tools nowadays have like a snippet, snippet format, but we wanted to find out how do we do it by industry. So this is just recommendation for leaders in the room. Rep, if reps, if you want to do this yourself, like it's a game changer. We went to customer success and we said, Hey, what are the client testimonials in these industries? Right? So we had like four to six, we had a spreadsheet that the customer success team would put the testimonials in. We would then, as leaders, then modify that to have it as sales-ready messaging. And then we created testimonial messaging to put in our outbound emails and also into our cold calling framework, et cetera. But again, more so for the emails. That way, when some, we were going after certain industries, we just pulled in the testimonial. It was relatable to that. And then we did the same framework that Will said. So I wanted to give you that just in the weeds, go create that because your reps are not Sometimes they don't know where to pull from. So if you create a resource on where to pull from, they know immediately what to get and then they go execute and go get results. I love that. That's uh, the, the other thing I want to know is the math behind my recommendation. So if you think about putting a hyperlink for a case study in your email, the click through rates, what, like one to 2% versus yeah. your open rate, which is hopefully above 40%. And so like your chance of them really engaging with that story is much higher. Absolutely. So Jared, let us know if that helped answer your question and let's get the next question up here um, as we go through this. Cause we have a lot of questions and I want to make sure that I acknowledge. Cool. Jared says fantastic. Great. All right. Um, interesting question here. Will, would you say mm -hmm. most of your advice applies across industries? Yes, I, I try to make sure the advice that I'm giving is broadly applicable, not just like specific to a lot of feedback you get is like, oh, well, this is great advice if you're selling to sales. And I'm like, no, <laughs> I'm looking at people who are selling to like CISOs, not just like VPs of sales, CISOs meaning like heads of information security. So like this is broadly applicable. Um, it's not specific to tech versus real estate versus I mean, like we've got folks selling lab equipment to PhD students. So like we see it all. Um, so the advice I give is broadly applicable. Perfect. But again, if you live in middle earth or out of the universe, like maybe not, but yeah. uh, industry wise, <laughs> like uh, we got you. Earth, like, you might be like dearest, <laughs> you know, so-and-so. Like. <laughs> true. That is true. But so <laughs> you might want to take yeah, that advice. All right, so... advice there. <laughs> <laughs> Facts. Okay, next question from Destin. Do you recommend high volume or low or, or low or do you recommend high volume low personalization? Okay. 
<laughs> you you came to the wrong party. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna tell you right now. Like, I mean, it's obvious math, right? Which is Morgan. I'm, I'm singing from your songbook here, which is yep. you know, your results equal the conversion rate times the volume. And so, um, one of the things you have to recognize with that, though, is like as email deliverability becomes more of a problem and you have to get your reply rates up in order to continue to land in the inbox. Like I'm way more of a fan of higher conversion rate than I am higher volume. Higher volume has been the name of the game for years now. And mm. we're starting to see the back. That's why we're here, right? We're seeing the backlash from high volume tactics. It's just not the same level of efficacy as it once was. So like personalization. I think the question is like, I think the question is like, how do you really balance the two? How do you find that? Which I lean on process more than I do technology. So like there's technology yep. that enables it, you know, shout out to what we're building, right? Or like shout out to what like the team at sales office even building where like technology enables smarter process. But like the... Yeah, you know, and like wonderful data providers like Cognizant, right? Like bringing helpful information to the forefront so that when you go to write an email to somebody, it's really easy to find that. But also like know when I'm reaching out to XYZ persona, I know mm. why I'm reaching out to them because I know what I'm looking for. I know where I'm going to go to look for it. And I know exactly how I'm going to use it when I find it. Like talking to teams about setting up like a personalization process like seems foreign, but like if I'm writing an email to Morgan, I should have a click path that's like clearly defined based off of what persona he falls into. And like, I know where I'm going, what I'm looking for, and then immediately how I'm going to go use it. Yeah, I I definitely agree um, across the board. And uh, what well, there's a, this was a part, it was another, oh, oh, there was a part two, I guess you came in. Okay. There was a part two to the question that I just saw as well. Okay. So as well, high volume, low personalization emails or high personalization, low volume emails. What's a good way to meet in the middle? I think as Will's explaining that ultimately at the end of the day, you have to go back to what Will's talking about, which is the math. The, if you just follow the math and follow the tasks, you will be able to do this. The reason most people won't do this, and this is me talking again, training reps at Salesforce and Slack and Google and things of that nature. Like I've just seen how people operate. The people who are the most successful that were the account executives or even the SDRs, it doesn't really matter what role they were in. They were able to do both, but they were very strategic and very thoughtful in their time management. Most people treat time management as an elementary task, yet it's the reason why most people are not able to do both. You could do both. You could do 10, just, just, you know, just do the math with me, right? Public math here. If you did 10, I'm going to ask for a whole lot, 10 personalized emails a day. Everyone can do this. 10. 10, 10 emails. It's not, it's not a lot. Well, I'm asking for a whole lot. 10. 10, 10, 10, I'm asking for 10 personalized emails a day. Watch out. The manager who's been email. trained to focus on account, like uh, activity <laughs> metrics, they're going to be like, 10? <laughs> what? <laughs> like, it's like, <laughs> 10. Yes. 10 emails, personalized emails a day. If you want to keep it super simple, five personalized emails in the morning, five personalized emails in the afternoon, right? Okay. So you do 10. Do all your other things you got to do. I like to call it relevancy at scale because you can't really personalize it, personalize it, personalize it scale because that's like an oxymoron itself, right? So you do 10 emails a day, personalize. That's 50 emails a week. 10 times five is 50. 50 times four is 200 personalized emails. Let's just, let's keep the math simple. Let's say you have a 10% meeting conversion rate off of that, off of 200 emails sent. That is 20 meetings that you set in a month by doing 10 personalized emails a day. If you did that for a quarter, that would be 60 meetings. I, like, and so, and so if you just do the math, this is doable. It is the sweet spot. It is possible. I've done it myself as a full sales soccer rep. I've taught people how to do this, and this is how they get successful. This is how they go 200, 300% a quarter. The biggest problem in what I just told you is doing it every single day and being consistent. That's the hardest part. It's not the data. It's not It's not even just the math of it. It's just the fact of you having to do that every single day. 10 personalized 
emails. And and yeah, I just gave 10% as an easy way to convert that. I don't want to do crazy math. But even if you had 5%, still pretty solid. So but just, the thing, Morgan, just something like, to think about. The average reply rate from a user of our product is 20.5% right now. So like it's not unthinkable, right? Like yeah. our team sees, I think, like 37% reply rates on average. Um, we've been starting to scale it up. So it's gone down a little bit from where it normally was, but like it's, it's showing up with a reason for why you're actually showing up. It's yep. that simple. Too many people, if you ask them, why are they sending an email to this person? It's because they're on their list. And like the person on the other end feels that yep. they don't want to be on your list. <laughs> they, they actually respond Not. with take me off of your list. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. No, it's spot on. So listen, Will is saying there in terms of like being intentional with each person, treat them as a person, not just as a number, and then know your math to be consistent. I promise if any of you follow what I just told you as a rep, you will be in the top sphere of a rep. It's it's inevitable. It's inevitable. You just have to do it. That's right. the difference. And that's where most people falter. That's where I've seen the biggest drop off. But the people who do it, yeah, they're top reps, you know, that I know personally. And there, and there's a reason for that. So we have five minutes left. We will answer more, some more questions, but I know people probably may have to hop to meetings and things of that nature. So will, if they want, if they want more uh, advice, they're like, what is this tool you keep talking about? Will talk to them. Um, well, it's lavender. Duh. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you, can, you can go to our website. It's lavender.ai and you can install it directly from the homepage. It's free to trial, go for it, have a ball. If you're looking for a job, fantastic for job seekers. You go install it, email our team, and we'll set you up for free until you go land a job. Thank you, appreciate the shout. Um, this thing about inbound, um, let's, let's talk about it because I think a lot of folks think about inbound as like something inherently nuanced or different. The context is the only thing that changed, right? The context, instead of being like your research, it's like a trigger event that set them up to be inbound. And I think that is like the core differentiator, right? It's like, hey, I saw you downloaded the white paper, right? Yeah. Or, hey, I saw you came to our site and requested a demo. What's something that you're looking to learn about the product? What are you trying to solve for? Why are you excited about like checking out what we're doing, right? Those are the kinds of things that, I see folks not necessarily think about, they think about like, oh, they're inbound. <laughs> Time to like drown them in info or something. And like the focus should still just be starting conversation. Yeah, it's the best. And you you explained it. I think we can hop to the next one as we do quick fire here. Your inbound is just a warmer outbound. It just gives you more context. That's all it is. Don't treat it any way else. Um, Julia's question. I think this comes back to what we talked about. Should you refer to cl current clients or not? I'm assuming like as part of the testimonials, I would say yes, if you can, right? Like some, some, some places you can't. Yeah. Um, if you're selling into information security, like CISOs and like cybersecurity, that world, they, they actually view that as a negative. Um, so like that would be one place where I'd look out, but outside of that, it's, you know, back to Morgan's point, if you can. Yeah, I think that that context is incredibly important. So, Julia, thanks for that question. Let's get the next question. Let's see if we, as many as we can get before we get out of here as we have two minutes. If this has been helpful so far, let us know. Share it us on LinkedIn. All right. Is there a certain place in the email you recommend answering the what do you want? I guess it's kind of like in the you, the show me, you know me part. Like, you know me. I'm assuming, like, what do you want? Like, I'm assuming the value prop. Like, where should, this, should that be? I'm assuming in the middle, but unless you have a different perspective on this. Um, what do you want? I think the question is like, why, why am I reaching out is the first thing you should like get across and what you want might be a piece of that. So I think the question is more around like how the entirety of the email comes together. Right. Cause like what you want could be at the bottom, but like Josh Braun posted a great example. I think it was like late last night. Um, and I commented on it and the CTA was the first sentence. Um, which was like, I think the CTA was like, are you interested in a non-traditional way to like produce TikToks, something like that. And <laughs> when he posted it, he was like, there's no CTA. How wild is this? I'm like, no, the CTA is just at the top. They just moved it around. Um, <laughs> but because he moved it, like 
it felt terribly like novel. Um, yeah, they immediately just went with like what they want out of the conversation. So that's, um, I think it depends. You can move it around, you can test it. The, the key here is just breaking down those templates into like underlying frameworks. Like what are you trying to accomplish with each sentence? And then playing around with the order goes into each like building block of that email and just like thinking about it one level deeper. And let's get to one last question right out of time as around the calendar uh, calendar link. I think this is important for to, to end off on because a lot of people have this calendar link. <laughs> yes or heck no. What, what's what's your case? I, I always say absolutely not, but well, what, what's your take here? Well, definitely not in the cold email, but like once they're open to the conversation, that's sure. where it becomes an interesting question. So like, I think we're clear on the hell no. But I'm curious, like, <laughs> so please don't. It's not for follow-ups either. Like, they need to respond first. Um, but, like, once that conversation is going and they want to have a conversation, I picked this up from JBay. It's, like, the triple option. So you offer up your calendar. You throw up a few times. So you'll say, like, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then throw up a few options. Mm -hmm. a, a video on our, our YouTube about this. Um, and then... The other thing you ask is for their calendar, if that's something they're more comfortable with. Now, usually they just click on your calendar link, but there's the random people out there who hate calendar links or like they feel like, oh, I'm so important. I've got to click on your calendar link. Like there's, there are people <laughs> exist. You know, yeah, whatever. they're the weirdos. They're weirdos out there. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I don't knock them for their ego, but like um, that that's my my approach to, to scheduling anyways. Cool. All right, y'all. Well, we appreciate your time. Thank you for your questions. Thank you for showing up here. Hopefully you all have a great rest of your day. Uh, sounds like you might want to round two, so we might run it back. Um, if you want to, if you do want to round two, you can always email Ashley and let her know and be like, yo, we want round two. Uh, so we could, we could discuss it um, with the team here, but Will, thanks so much for your time. I'm glad we were able to do this, man. It's been a long time and uh, hopefully I'll find this helpful to go get some meetings. Yeah, Morgan, appreciate the invite, man. This was fun. Absolutely. Y'all have a good one. Cheers. Bye, y'all.